Hi everyone, I've been watching the planets and last night Mars was in the spotlight. The red planet was at opposition and in many areas just to my north and west it was actually occulted by the moon. Let's take a look at Mars and the moon. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop and welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Well, last night the Earth was directly between the Sun and the planet Mars, which is known as opposition. That is, Mars was on the opposite side of the Earth with respect to the Sun. However, this was not one of the better oppositions of the red planet. Right now, Mars at opposition is about 51 million miles away. The opposition of Mars occurs about well, every 26 months. Now during the last opposition in 2020 on uh, October 13th, Mars was much closer to the Earth being only 39 million miles away compared to the 51 million right now and was much larger in viewing size as well being 22 and a half arc seconds in size compared to Mars this year only being 17.2 arc seconds. The best opposition in recent years was back in 2003 or 2003 on August 28th when it was 34.6 million miles away shining at a magnitude get this minus 2.9 almost as bright as Venus and was brighter than Jupiter and the size was a large 25.1 arc seconds compared to that 17 we have for tonight. The next opposition will be January 16, 2025, and that'll be even further away at 59.9, well, let's just say 60 million miles away. And that'll be followed by even a worse opposition, February 19th, 2027, at being 63 million miles from the Earth. So, you know, all in all, that 51 last night doesn't sound all that bad. The next good opposition, though, we'll have to wait for a while, 2035 at 35.4 million miles away. And the next best opposition won't be until August 29th, 2287, not 2087, 2287, when it'll be 34.6 million miles away. With that being said, let's take a look at last night. Now, since the moon was the prominent subject and compared to Mars, it is much, much larger in size. So. I decided to use the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor telescope to shoot the target. Now this telescope has a focal length of 910 millimeters. Usually for planetary, I would use the large Celestron 11 inch scope that has a very long focal length of 2800 millimeters. Usually for planetary imaging, you want to use the uh, longest focal length telescope that you can find and, and, and use. And, by the way, here is a view through the Celestron telescope at F10 on November 29th. It looks large, but when you compare that to the size of the moon, it is extremely small. As a matter of fact, the moon in this shot would have completely obliterated the view. Here's the first view from last night with the Orion Eon, and it's of the moon with Mars nearby in appearance. Yeah, I had to put an arrow to show where Mars was located. It is tiny when you compare it to the size of the moon. So I set up my software, which is SharpCap, to take a picture of the planet and the moon every 15 minutes. And then I stacked them together showing what appeared to be the path of Mars over a two hour time period. But in reality, it wasn't Mars moving, but instead, yeah, it was the moon with most of the motion. This is what actually occurred with the moon moving past Mars. Now, a bit further north and west, the moon actually covered the planet, which is known as an occultation, where Mars was basically eclipsed by the moon. Well, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. That helps my channel grow and to get YouTube to suggest it to more and different viewers. Hopefully soon I'll be cracking through that 5,000 subscriber mark and that's because of you, my viewers, which I'm very thankful for. Also, I'm very thankful for those who have 
uh, become friends of Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, and you could do that as well. Meanwhile, I'm currently at 4,564. Is that right? 4,000? Yeah, right. Anyway, also, if you're planning to buy a telescope for a beginner, such as your son, daughter, nephew, niece, your spouse, or your grandchildren, or your grandparents, I posted a video on how to choose a beginner's telescope. And you can go to it right over here on my uh, uh, channel. Right here, I have a link to it at the end of this video. And uh, it's on my other channel, though, Pat's Weather and Nature channel. So please check that out if you're looking for to buy a beginner's telescope. One of my upcoming projects will be the Trio in Leo. That's three big galaxies in the constellation Leo. I started gathering some of the data already, and I'm very interested in this one over here. That's the Hamburger Galaxy, also known as NGC 3628. There's a trail of dust that I'm looking to capture, and I'll be using both telescopes, the Eon and the big Celestron at F10, to try to capture some of that faint data from that galaxy. And that coming up in future videos. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, just like these galaxies over here. And they're all in a sky near you. So, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.